Cass Cook, professional wrestling's greatest manager and professional wrestling's greatest human being. Here are the few words for you ahead of this Saturday night in East Carondelet, Illinois. First of all, I need to clear up a couple of rumors that have been going around about this uh, upcoming show. You see, there's a six-man tag team bout on this event. Pitting on one side of the ring, Ricky Cruz, Keith Smith Sr. and Keith Smith Jr. against the combination of the King, Christopher Hargis, the superstar, Steve Fender, and rounding out the team, yours truly, Travis Cook. Now, for the last two or three weeks, Herb Simmons has been bloviating on and on about how he's forcing me into this match. And if I don't go through with this match, I'll be fired and blah, 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 blah. He's made it really sound as though uh, he's throwing his weight around. As though he can boss me around or the Travis Cook organization around or whatever. I'm going to give you a little uh, behind-the-scenes knowledge, folks. A little, a little education on professional wrestling that you're not going to get on, on Monday Night Raw or Ring of Honor or the Dirt Sheets, anything like that. <sighs> In professional wrestling, no promoter, not Herb Simmons, not even Vince McMahon, can order around the top-level talent. There's no promoter on God's green earth that can go to his main event guys and say, you're going to go into this match with this stipulation and you don't have a choice in it. That doesn't happen. You can do that with the first or second match on the card guys. You can do that with the preliminary boys, but you can't do it to the main event talent. Because if you try to do it to the main event talent, they can always say, I don't agree to that. I'll walk out. I'll go somewhere else. We have leverage. The Travis Cook organization has always been in that position. We are today. So if we really didn't want to go through with this match, we wouldn't have signed the contract. We would have threatened to walk out, which I have done before in other promotions. And this, by the way, is... Why you don't see me working for a few other promotions that I used to work for, for those of you that have paid attention over the years. In other words, there's negotiation with a top talent that always has to go back and forth before a match is signed or a match is finalized, whether you're Herb Simmons or Vince McMahon, his own self. Now, rest assured, we did sign the contract for that six-man tag team match. I signed the contract for that match. I will be in that match. And it's not going to be any kind of, oh, I'm going to walk out to the ring with my arm in a sling or, or, or claim to have an injury or try to pull a substitute last minute. No, none of that's going to happen. I'm signed for the match. I'm going to wrestle in the match. Point being, that would not have happened if we didn't agree to it, if we didn't want it to happen. If I really didn't want to be in this match, I wouldn't be, but I am. So think about this. Why, why would I go into a match like this? Why would Travis Cook, a man who's not an active professional wrestler, why would I go into this type of match in this type of environment? Well, aside from the fact that I have two of the best wrestlers in the world on my side, the superstar Steve Fender and the King Christopher Hargis, and that makes for a heck of a six-man tag team. But aside from that, I see this as an opportunity. You see, I know. I know what you all are thinking. I know what Ricky Cruz is thinking. I know what the Smiths are thinking. I know what Herb Simmons is thinking. I know that you, Ricky Cruz, hold me personally responsible for every horrible thing that's happened to your family in 2018. I know you hold me responsible for Keith Smith Jr. taking five pile drivers and you can cart it out to a hospital. I know you hold me personally responsible for locking a steel cage door and three of the best wrestlers in the world beating you the chain to the point that you were left laying in a pool of your own blood. Yeah, Chris Hargis is the one that threw the pile drivers. Yeah, it was Steve Fender and Leland Race that, that swung the chain, but you hold me responsible for it. And I know you hold me responsible for last month when Kevin Sullivan and Cahagas came here and with the help of a spike, left you laying in a pool of your own blood again. You hold me personally responsible for all of it, even though in most cases it was other people doing the damage. Let me tell you something, Ricky Cruz. You're right. 
I am responsible. I'm responsible for all of that. I may not have been the one that that hit the pile driver or swung the chain, but I'm the one that gave the orders. I'm the one that paid the money. I'm the one that gave the instructions. So you're right. I am responsible. I did it and I'll do it again. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you're going to go into that ring in a six-man tag team match and you're going to get your hands on me and Keith Smith Sr. is going to get his hands on me and that little punk pipsqueak Keith Smith Jr., he's going to get his hands on me and the three of you are going to tear me limb from limb and you're going to beat me so bad, you're going to beat me to the point that I'm carted out of that building in an ambulance and you'll never see me again. I know that's what you're thinking. But ask yourself a question. Would I have agreed to this match? And make no mistake, I agreed to it. Herb Simmons didn't force me into it. Would I have agreed this, to this match if there were any possible way that could happen? There's no way in hell. I never would have signed the contract. So the fact that I've signed the contract should tell you something. Now, why would I sign a contract like that? Why would I agree to it? It's because I'm so tough. I'm such a badass that I can knock you out. Well, don't discount that possibility. But even that's not the real reason for it, Ricky Cruz. Because I want you to think back. For six or seven months now, every time you have thought you've had things in your favor, every time you've thought that the odds were even, every time that you thought you were at ringside with Keith Smith Jr. so the odds were even up and what happens? He takes five pile drivers. When you had a cage put up around the ring so I couldn't interfere and you thought you had everything in your favor, what happened? You were left lame. Every time you've had things your way or you thought you had things your way, at the end of the night, you and your family have been laying in the middle of the ring and I have been standing over your worthless carcasses every single time. And what makes you think this Saturday night's going to be any different? I know you think you're going to be in the ring in a six-man tag team match against the King Christopher Hargis, the superstar Steve Fender, and Travis Cook. That's what's signed. But think about it. Are you really in a match with just the three people across the ring from you? Maybe you better check the side door before you come out. Maybe you better look out in the crowd before you get in the ring. Maybe you better look in the parking lot. Maybe when you're in the locker room lacing up your boots, maybe you better look at the guy next to you. I mean, what have you seen for the last six months? You have seen us use handcuffs. You have seen us use chains. You have seen us use chairs. You have even seen us use... One of these, oh yeah, Kevin Sullivan left this behind, by the way, and I'm in possession of it. You've even seen us use a fireball in Flash Flanagan. Every time that we've been in a situation, we've always had a game plan and it's always worked. There's some kind of trap waiting up for you every single time. Is it the fireball Saturday night? Is it the handcuffs? Is it the spike? Or is it something else? Because I just mentioned all three of these. You'll be looking out for them. Maybe it's something else. Is it someone in the crowd? Is it someone in the parking lot? Is it someone in the gas station that you stop at before you get here? Is it someone in your neighborhood? Ricky Cruz, you don't know where it'll come from. You don't know what it will be. And you don't know who will do it. So you go for being scheduled for a six-man tag team match where you think everything, all the odds are even, and now you got now you got to get him in the ring and stand in that corner and look around and say, wait, are we surrounded? Because maybe you are. I'm going to make one final statement on this, and I want you, Ricky Cruz, Keith Smith Sr., Keith Smith Jr., Herb Simmons, I want every last one of you to take this to the bank. I know 
that you're planning on ripping me limb from limb. But I'm going to make a prediction, or maybe it's a promise. At the end of that match, Saturday night, that six-man tag match in East Carondelet, I will be leaving that ring and leaving that building under my own power. But one of you, and maybe more than one of you, will not. <laughs>